You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. Hey, what's up? This is Opus the Dopest from Dead by Wednesday, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Yeah. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. Before I bring my guest on to today's podcast, please get out and go to YouTube and support Bod's Mayhem Hour. Just subscribe and uh, like and click the notification bell. Support me because I got a lot of great stuff that's coming down the pipe. A lot of great interviews, and, and I'm just going to say this right now, folks. If you want real great interviews, stop wasting your time and listen to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get some heck out of it. I don't care. I don't care. It's time to stand up for myself. Anyway, today's guest is Opus, the drummer of Dead by Wednesday, Hell the Horns, Ellison, and Earth. And Dead by Wednesday has released their sixth album titled Capital Conspiracy via Mind Snap Music, Salt of the Earth Records. Also, check out their video, Here Comes the Dead. That's out right now, and you won't be disappointed. And uh, he's got some other stuff that he's also worked on. We'll get into that a little bit later. But Opus, welcome to the podcast. And how you doing, my brother? Hey, man. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. And um, I'm excited to be here and talk about the new album and everything that's going on with uh, Dead by Wednesday. That's the uh, main focus right now with, uh, with everything happening and all the excitement around the new album and the new video and just so much happening with the band. So um, I really appreciate you uh, having having me on and, and uh, you know, giving me a chance to uh, talk more about it and, and let people know that might not know in your area or people that you're around your circle. Uh, what's what's going on with Dead by Wednesday? You know, I think this is a cool outfit that you've got a uh, cool nucleus, I should say, that's in this band because you guys are no stranger to music. But how excited are you guys to have this? sixth album that's getting or that's out right now capital conspiracy how excited are you guys to have this out especially and all this craziness that's going on well i guess technically it is our sixth album being a full length we do have an ep so i guess it would be that would be considered our seventh but realistically six is is the the number of of full length so uh i am stoked for many reasons and that's because it showcases uh, our new singer Esteban Alvarez, who is a monster. He's a uh, he's just got so much genuine, built up angst and 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 aggression um, due to the fact that he's a you know a combat veteran and he sees what's going on with our world right now and and a lot of the topics that are that are that he writes about in his lyrics are like about social and political um, things that are happening with our world and um, and just basically touching upon real life stuff as well. Um, things that are happening, you know, personally, how it makes you feel. Um, there's, there's, there's songs about suicide. Uh, there's songs about, you know, control. There's songs about um, the, the misuse and abuse of media, which is actually uh, the slight on midi- media, which is actually the song Here Comes the Dead, which we released a video for. It premiered on Metal Injection and now it's out right now. It's doing really well, um, getting played all over the place and being added to a bunch of different um uh, outlets and stuff. Uh, so it, it's really, uh, it's really exciting for us because, you know, I feel like it's almost like a uh, chance to almost, uh, start over like a rebirth. Once again, uh, we, this band had a lot of changes in the past and, you know, throughout it all, the foundation, the rhythm section, me and the bass player, Mike Modest and myself have been the original members. So we're kind of like the, the core of the band, um, that and, and then we have the icing on the cake, which is Dave Sharp, uh, on you know, master guitar player, and who also played with me with Ellison for a while for five years, and then also the new addition, Steve. So it's really awesome, and and uh, I do feel like it's like a rebirth in a sense, but also it's it's cool because it the new album is brings it back to the old school Dead by Wednesday, which a lot of our fans like. A lot of our fans like the more underground, heavier stuff that we did in the beginning so we brought it so as you know esteban brought that vibe back 
And then we also mix it with a more updated, modern production with Nikki Belmore from Dexter's Lab Recording Studio, who's also the drummer at D. Snyder, Toxic Holocaust, Jasta from Hatebreed, and from Connecticut. He, he uh, you know, it was the producer of the album. So we took uh, an old school DBW, brought it back to the vibe, but had more of a modern approach to it. So it has the best of both worlds um, is, is, is the only way I can really describe it. So yeah, we're stoked. But after adding those pieces, man, how, how was the, uh, how did it feel adding those pieces? Did it feel like these were the right pieces that were missing that made Dead by Wednesday kick on another level compared, not knocking the other band mates or anything like that. I'm just saying, was it like a breath of fresh air adding these pieces to Dead by Wednesday? Well, whenever you work with new people, you always, it always feels like, unless it's, unless it's wrong and you know it's wrong and you can tell off the bat, um, it always feels like a breath of fresh air. And that's not, and that isn't a knock to anybody else. Cause there's always something, there was something special about every band member that I ever played with. Sure. Um, there was only one big fat jerk that I've ever dealt with. And, and I won't even give him the time of day to talk about it, but everyone else in the band, I respect as musicians and people. And also um, as you know, humans, I mean, we're all, we're all human and we all have needs and wants and desires and, and our own talents. And, you know, for, for it's, it's already hard enough to be in a band and, and try to make a living in the music business. So I don't slight on anyone for, you know, having to leave or, or not be able to continue sacrificing everything to do this because that's what it takes. You know, so many years of blood, sweat, tears, money, investment, uh, time, uh, energy, you name it, goes into uh, a band. And so, yeah, you know, there's changes and, and, and people have to just understand that that's what it's like nowadays. It's not easy. The gas prices, even the only money you make is from touring, but now it's even harder to go tour because of the gas prices. So, you know, you sell a t-shirt, that's the money you make. You don't make money off. You spend thousands investing in producing an album that you believe in and love. And it gets downloaded for free. Lars Ulrich was right. You know, um, it's it's just there's no money in that facility, in that facet. So you have to find other ways. And so the days of being in a, a like that one band that that just blows up and makes you a living like Led Zeppelin or Black Sabbath or ACDC or Pantera or Van Halen or any of those bands. That's not the way it is. So we all do other things like this is our this is our art. So we, we don't necessarily make money off this. We more invest and we sometimes even lose. We're in the red. But we this is this. But we're hoping to build it up to the point where it does become, you know, a, a commodity. Uh, so it's 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 more of an art form. It's more of our love. It's more of our heart. And so we do other things like I host trivia when I'm home on from not on tour. I'll do like some TV part time stuff. I'll play in a Black Sabbath tribute band that kicks ass and plays all over the world with a singer that looks like Ozzy called Earth. Black Sabbath Tribute USA. We tour Europe. We're going to get back again in September. And that I make money from that. And I use that to invest into my art. So that way, you know, I don't, um, uh, I don't implode money, you know. So a lot of people don't understand the hustle, but that's what it takes. It's, it's the hustle. It's not about uh, one particular thing anymore, you know. It's the entertainment business as a whole, as an umbrella. What you do underneath it is up to you, you know. And I, I do a lot, you know. Oh, I, I, I totally get it. And, and I screamed to the top of my lungs, you know, if you're out seeing these bands, buy a button, buy a sticker, buy the album that they got at their merch table, buy a shirt. Hey, yeah. I'm, I'm a big guy. I wear large, large shirts. <laughs> I don't have them. I mean, if everyone did that, it, it would, it would make the music scene thrive so much more, but people yeah. are too, people are too invested in buying a beer or tearing people down instead of lifting them up and supporting them. And that's what I find a lot, at least on a local level. Um, you know, I love my scene and I love Connecticut and that's what's made Connecticut is what made me who I am. So I got nothing but love for Connecticut, but there's also, you know, uh, a lot of people that when you start seeing success, um, they love the underdog, but once you start seeing success, then yeah. you get people that are also, uh, you know, secret haters out there sure. too. You know? I got you. I got you. And, and like I was saying, you know, I'll buy a shirt, even though I wear a large, you know, very large shirts. I don't care. I'll buy a shirt. I'll buy the album. I'll buy two or three albums and, yeah. and I'll give them away on the show, but I'm buying these albums and supporting you guys because 
that's that's your gas money that's your food money that, that's for a hotel room that, that's their money to go out and buy some groceries for the next couple of days yeah you know yep. and they don't live it up folks some of these guys they have to buy like tuna crackers you know 24 cases of, of soda pot whatever ramen that's noodle exactly ramen noodle that's all they get yeah yeah so i mean and realistically like you know we all have, we're all dads too so it's not like we're like 21 and and kidless and living in a van down by the river we're like <laughs> older guys have been doing it since we were like 13 14 15 and um we have a lot of experience and a lot of uh you know a lot of things come with that you know with, with talent wise and everything else but also we all have we're all dads we're all rock and roll dads we all have a son at home and or multiple kids and and um and so like you know that t-shirt that cd that that download uh puts food on the table for our kids too you know and and allows us to allows us to do what we do so if you like our music why wouldn't you want to support a band exactly exactly man so what led the track here comes the dead to be the first track released off the sound what, what was it about that track that what, said funny why do you say that and funny it's, it's a great segue for a couple of things we were talking about before you started we pressed the record button and also for this song here comes the dead so uh, esteban our singer started with us when we were about to go on tour with a band called twisted i don't know if you've ever heard of twisted they're awesome sure have. yeah sure have and um which is still going to happen in, in the future As a matter of fact we're, we're doing some other stuff with them too i guess uh magic uh entertainment uh magic ninja entertainment is going to do an interview with us for, about the new album soon and stuff like that uh twisted's company but we were supposed to go out with them and our singer uh from then rob roy uh, just ended up getting uh, finding a, a, getting a new career where he was basically making like a year salary in like a, a month every you know so it was like it was a no brainer he couldn't turn it down I understood it sucked because we put all our eggs in one basket and put his face and his voice all over everything like everybody else does but he did do some ma massive runs with us which actually made him probably realize that he didn't want to do it. It clarified it because, you know, we were living in the trenches on the Flotsam and Jetsam tour, opening up for them for the entire country. Um, and that was hard, man. We were gone for like a couple months and we were eating, like you said, tuna out of a can and shit like that. And he's a big dude. He's got to sustain a lot of, you know, 200 and something pounds, 220 pounds, all muscle. And he, you gotta, he has to sustain that. But anyway, so he, like a man, told us that he couldn't do the, the tour and that he was leaving, which I respect a lot because a lot of these guys just kind of sp like spinelessly like bow out and, and make up excuses and don't and don't come at you like a like a man to man. Uh, but Rob did. And uh, I have a lot of respect because of that. And so we were like, well, what are we going to do? So we sort of put out um, tryouts and a bunch of different people, you know, put their um, name in a hat. In fact, one of the guys uh, was an awesome dude who now is the singer of a band called Living Wreckage, who is playing with the guys from Anthrax and uh, Shadows Fall and, a, and another side project they have. And uh, but but when when Esteban came, he came just more prepared. He knew all the music. He didn't have to look at a lyric sheet. Uh, he brought that, that uh, kind of wild energy to, to, the, to, the, to the rehearsal, never mind the stage. And so we knew right off the bat, we kind of looked at each other. We're like, wow, this guy is pretty damn good. We didn't want to let him know, but we, we knew. <clears throat> and um, so we hired him pretty much on the spot and he was psyched. And he, he was just to fill in the, for that tour um, until we knew what was going on with Rob and yada, yada. And then he like I said, he finally told us that it was, wasn't going to happen anymore. Out of state. Really poor. And they were like, well, we're not going to end up being a local band. You know, who just plays, who does like the circle jerk playing the same venue over and over again. And so, and that's pretty much what he said. That's all he could do is, is weekend and stuff. And I was like, well, that's not going to work. So we put, after we saw, you know, Esteban, he came in and, and knew everything. We, we hired him up uh, for the tour. And then what happened was the pandemic hit. And when the pandemic hit, it was a slow process that where things were getting canceled so the tour got canceled and we're like okay well now what? so this poor dude joins on for this tour and then his first opportunity to play with us is getting you know canceled so we're like well let's try to set up a local show we do that that gets canceled so basically nothing happened for like months and months and months and then finally 
Um, finally, like things open up in certain places like Texas and Florida, places that just didn't care. They were like, okay, I, we don't care. We're going to leave our stuff open. So we started trying to just target those places. And we were able to do that with Ellison for at first because me and the guitar player Dave Sharp played with David Ellison of Megadeth or ex Megadeth for five years. So we ended up doing some shows um, during COVID with them, with Saliva, who I ended up getting a newfound love for. I love Saliva. Those guys are awesome. And, um, and basically, uh, we, did, we did that, and we knew that we could do those markets with Dead by Wednesday when we got back. So we sort of started molding some shows around, around that. And also, while we were doing that, we were uh, slowly writing a new album. And we were like, you know, even though we couldn't get together and there was a pandemic and, and all that stuff with COVID, we were still meeting on Zoom like a normal band would every week, like we do now, every Thursday, like we do now, uh, at the same time, same bat time, same bat place like we do now, but we were doing it on Zoom. And we were talking about things. Yeah, we were talking about things. And we were writing on there and doing riffs. And, and luckily, everyone but myself being the drummer, uh, they all have like little setups where they can record demos and stuff where they were actually recording things remotely and sending it to all of us so we were i would play to it here get ready for the studio i, would, I was the only one that had to go to the studio to record the, the drums so i would go i would learn them i would play and then i would go by myself with a mask on to nikki belmore studio and we would record tracks and then they would all remotely record their tracks and then send them to nikki and nikki would mix it so it was all done modern remotely almost uh, except for a couple songs and, and towards the end when we started writing together like the which is funny because the very first song invincible of the album was kind of like not even supposed to be on the album and that was towards the end where we got into a room and we started playing again together after it started the pandemic started wearing off and we wrote songs together like that and that ended up being some of the best stuff and we ended up recording it and putting it and that was the first song on the album now but the reason why it's funny is because the, the original question was how did Here Comes the Dead come about? Well, that was one of the first songs that we recorded besides The Wake and um, uh, SOS, which we released as a single before, just to give everyone a taste of Esteban, before the album came out. SOS, which is still up there, a great, great song. And then uh, we recorded The Wake, which we, we held on to because it was so good. We didn't want to let it out mm -hmm. uh, until the album came out. And then we do a video and a single. And then we did Here Comes the Dead. And Here Comes the Dead, what happened, how that came about was my son, Orion, actually came up with a title. He's like, he started getting into zombies and stuff. And I forgot exactly what, it was like Minecraft and, and zombies. And he's like, he's like, Papa, he calls me Papa, you know, we're Italian. It was Papa, I think you should do, Dead by Wednesday should do a song called Here Comes the Dead. And, it, and I looked at him like, this kid is like brilliant. Like, what is going on? Like, what is going on right now? Like, uh, you know, I, I, I'm far I'm far from brilliant. So I, well, he must get it from his mother. But regardless. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, this is that's a great title, Orion. So I took it to, I gave it to Esteban. I said, listen, I have no lyrics. I have no ideas. I, my son came up with this title. He, he's even credited on the album for, the, for part of the songwriting because of it. I said, my son, Orion, came up with the title. Use the title and, and write something. And he wrote a whole theme around it about media, about how media controls us. And, and, uh, and, and that, I, you know, as you could tell in the video, which Tom Flynn, who's an amazing director, who does Lamb of God, Body Count, All That Remains. He, uh, he directed that video at Toad's Place, our hometown venue, a uh, great place. And, um, and that was the concept. And so I, I had to, like, give my, my son props for that one. And, uh, and basically, that's how it came about. You know, Orion actually ended up coming up with the title and then Esteban wrote around that whole concept basically. But how cool is that man to see your son come up and say, Hey Papa, Hey, look, let's do this. You know, use this right here. We suddenly just run with this. I mean, just out of nowhere like that, man. Yeah, eight years old. Eight, eight, I think yeah. he's seven, he was seven when he told me that. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's funny about Orion being that, it's, you know, we were talking about earlier how that, that's a, a Metallica song mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it was like a funny situation with him where, you know, originally we thought I was a girl and I was going to go with Araya, meaning, which is the, you know, Tom Araya from Slayer. He's, I liked his last name, Araya, for a girl. And when we found out that he had a little peepee, -pee, um, my, my, the easiest thing ever happened. And my girl goes, 
what about Orion instead? Because she's all, you know, she's Wiccan and she's all into astrology and stuff like that. And so that's really what, what it came from. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, damn, I, I used to play in a Metallica tribute band called Alcoholica. Master of Puppets is probably my favorite album of all time. I love the, that song, Orion. I love hit that name. The fact that you just threw that out there as a possibility and being an astrology sign and, and no, coming, from, you know, coming from the whole Araya idea. I'm like, that is perfect. So it was like the easiest naming. We were just both like, we were both like, yep, yep. Okay, cool. So there, there it was, Orion. And the funniest story was um, he, the, the surgeon who delivered Orion in New York City found out that I played in the Metallica tribute band. And uh, when he found that out, uh, he didn't even ask, which is funny because usually they play calming music. But they he also knew that we were planning on naming the, the kid Orion. And so when I walked in for her, when I walked in to give for her to give birth, they were blasting the Master of Puppets album over the airwaves in the, in the friggin when they were giving birth to Orion in the surgeon's uh, hospital. It was, it was hilarious. That's so awesome. But see there, man, like we talked before, there's a connection with me, you and, and, and all this with, with Master of Puppets. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Oh, yeah, you were that you were mentioned that you had a re, uh, you were at a connection with that album too for a reason. Yeah. What was that? Well, just just uh, it was many people know but without that album, man, I wouldn't be sitting here today and especially Orion that instrumental. I mean, that saved my life. Uh that song specifically one night and uh without that album without without that album being in my life and being my voice and saying everything that I need to say and just taking me away and and you know, letting my anger out, I wouldn't be here because I struggle with my father being sick, you know, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty, um, heartfelt, man. And it's weird that you say that. Cause there is a, you know, he sort of saved my life in a sense too. Like I, I've been, uh, sober for, not that I had a, not that I had an addiction, but I, I stopped drinking almost, uh, four and a half, almost five years now. And, and mainly because of him, I just don't want to be, um, you know, those guys, those dads that come home and they open up a six pack, they yeah. open up a beer back on the couch every day. They learn from watching your antics. So uh, what, why, how am I going to tell him not to do it or, or it's not good for you if I'm doing it every day and showing him that it's okay. So I sort of chose besides some other, you know, some minor health issues that I had with like uh, um, uh, GERD and stuff like that, which all contributed to it. Um, I also just didn't want to be an exa a bad example. And I sort of just said, you know what? I don't need it. And I stopped and it, my drumming got better. Um, you know, my things around me got better. And so I sort of attribute that to Orion as well. So we, we have that connection, which is kind of um, slightly odd, but cool. Metallica, you guys have got to come on here and talk to me and Opus. Uh, when, we, when I get you oh, yeah. guys on here, we'll, we'll, I mean, Opus will interview you guys. <laughs> and like I said before, it's in my upcoming book. I have a book coming out, all a biography, because I had a crazy, crazy life and a lot of, and a wild roller coaster of a music career. Um, uh, Lars was right, and I say it many times in that book. <laughs> he was right. I can imagine so, my friend. All right, Opus, are these all brand new songs, or or some of these songs that didn't make a previous EP or or an album by Dead by Wednesday? No, they're they're all brand new songs except for the last track. The last track is like our Detroit Rock City. Um, it's a song called Pawns that originally came out on the Killing Project album, got played on the last episode of Headbangers Ball uh, with Jamie Josta and uh, was on rotation on Liquid Metal on Sirius uh, Satellite ra Radio and did really well for us. And uh, it's a, which we just thought it was very uh, the, the, the topic of Pawns is the chorus. We are not your pawns. It's a it's a very current. Uh, it has a lot of, of, of the similar ideas on, uh, of the album uh, that we have on Capital Conspiracy. So we chose to redo it. We did a remake of our own song and made it a little faster, better production, a little heavier, detuned the guitars. Uh, we still have the original singer on it, my cousin Chesky, who's blown up as well as Esteban. We have both of them. And uh, we called it Pawns 2022 instead of just Pawns. Um, so we, that's the only song that's a, um, not a brand new tune. That's a remake of an older song that we, we redid and put at the end of uh, Capital Conspiracy. So any tracks that didn't make this album we could see on another upcoming album by you guys or an EP maybe? Uh, we're, we already have a bunch of riffs and, and, and half songs written. Okay. Uh, nothing I'm putting on this. 
Um, but, but yeah, we, we have some stuff coming. We also actually, we have two bonus tracks that we did with, uh, Chris Poland, the original guitar player of Megadeth, yeah, which yeah. Sounds, sounds like old school Megadeth mixed with like modern dead by Wednesday. It's pretty cool. It's really cool. So we're going to probably work on those and make, and we're going to like call those like a uh, bonus tracks, you know, we call them boner tracks, you know, <laughs> any tracks standing out more to you than any right now on this album? I know these are your babies, man, but are there any that stick out? I, to you my, my favorite track on the album has got to be Wasteland. And, and it's, it's fun. again, again, I, irony here. Uh, we just got booked onto the Weekend Wasteland Festival in the middle of the uh, desert in California. It's like a Mad Max apocalyptic style, like Burning Man uh, festival, but it's not hippie based. It's like all like crazy. Um, and it, thousands of people in the middle of the Mojave Desert. And we just got booked onto that. So we're going to, sh- they have like pyro going and stuff. And uh, we're playing September 30th and um, and we're going to do a video there with all that stuff going on for the song Wasteland, which is on our album, which is pretty funny. Uh, so that's something else we're doing. Um, our Here Comes the Dead video is out now. We're going to have another video in a few weeks coming out for um, Invincible, the first track on the album. Uh, we have a, a, an amazing a feature, thanks to Jeremy Safford, uh, coming out in Outburn magazine in the July issue a whole feature and interview uh, in Outburn magazine, which is a West coast magazine. You probably heard of it. It's an awesome magazine. Um, we also just got a booked onto a show with a uh, hailstorm and the pretty reckless. Oh, so wow. we're open uh, that show. Not well, we're supporting them on a second stage, but it's a, a stage sponsored by Sierra Nevada, the beer, which is ironic since I don't drink, but um, we're doing that um, at the uh, bank of pavilion in Guilford, New Hampshire. And then we go on tour supporting the album July 29th through August 14th. Uh, the kickoff show is at the Tank in Agawa, Mass. It's the only area, only local area show uh, with Generation Kill. Yep. And it ends at the Empire in Albany, New York. Uh, Mike Valente from Brick by Brick's Place, um, awesome club, um, on August 14th. And everywhere in between, we're dipping into the Midwest and going down to the East Coast, doing a few shows in Florida and then coming back up. Um, doing all a bunch of places all in between North Carolina, Virginia, uh, you, you name it, um, bunch of bunch of places, uh, Maryland, and then and then so we're doing that tour, Generation Kill, which is uh, Rob Dukes, uh, formerly the singer of X, who actually sings on one of our songs on our last album, the uh, not last album, the two albums prior, the self um, the guest vocalist album that we did called Darkest of Angels, mm-hmm. uh, that was on EMP David Ellison's label. Rob Dukes did a song with us called Donner's Pass, but we're, so we're doing, it's us and them local bunch, you know, a few locals in each, in each state, us direct support dead by Wednesday and then generation kill with Rob Dukes. And then afterwards we get together and we play a few Exodus songs just for fun. Um, and that's, that's the tour for two and a half, three weeks. Yeah. And, and the tour he's talking about guys with generation kill is the generation dead tour. So yes, sir. Check that That's out right. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw that earlier too. I thought that was pretty nice. But you guys are yeah, good. we're promoting uh, the new or both of our new albums. Generation Kill has a new album out as well. Was there a track though, Opus, you were working on that totally ended up sounding different than it was intended to when it was first brought to the table? Was there one that just changed a lot, maybe? Oh yeah, uh, there was a uh, there's like a ballad kind of like a rock ballad. Um, that's probably the uh, mellowest song on the album. Uh, still, still rocking though. Uh, darkened times and it got switched up and cut up and changed up so many so much until it became what it is now and I wasn't sure for a while if it was going to have it, it was going to make it um, but but Nikki's the best and he made it into an amazing song and now I love it and um, I can't wait to play it live yeah working with Nikki Belmore man did he get something out of you guys that maybe somebody else might not have gotten possibly on this album he always gets the best out of me. He's a, he's a drummer. He's also an amazing drummer. Um, so, you know, he really um, pushes you and, and he knows what my limits, he knows what I can do and he knows that I could, what I could do better. Um, and he, and he'll be uh, upfront about it. You know, you might not like it, but he'll be upfront about it. So, so yeah, I like working with people like that because, you know, you don't want just yes men around you. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, you want people that are going to tell you the truth um, sometimes it isn't always, it's not always what you want to hear, but it, it does help. You know, I love this cover art and that was done by Ermitus Blanco. And I probably said their first name incorrectly, yeah. but, uh, 
it was uh it was done by an artist who was actually uh brought to us by Ewar from They Might Be Zombies uh band in in uh in Florida. They're a great band and he, you know, thank you Ewar. He he uh he found this artist for us who killed it. Did a great job. That's what I was going to ask. Did they get exactly what you were looking for? Or was there something specifically that you wanted on here that he just knocked but, out of the ballpark? It was the idea. We just gave them an idea and they sort of did that a sketch. And then they would, then they did some colors and we told them what we liked, what we didn't like, and they changed it. And they basically molded it. They, we liked the idea from the get go, but we molded it to, to our likes and until we got the final product. What's the growth musically you've seen from yourselves working on this album, Capital Conspiracy, man? What's the growth that you've seen, you know, maybe from 2019's eponymous album, maybe, or what's the growth just overall? I just think, you know, understanding the business and, and, and knowing a good, having a good balance between um, marketable music, which with catchy hooks and, memorable things and riffs and stuff like that and having the respect of musicians and having it be uh having it still be somewhat progressive and and innovative and creative but not over the top where the common folk can't understand it it's got to be a nice uh medium uh, and a, a happy medium where like sometimes less is more but we always, but we do switch it up and then we'll throw you a, a, a curveball in the middle of it. Like, whoa, that's really wild and weird. And, and um, you know, so it, that's pretty much the growth is, is learning the balance, knowing when less is less is more, um, knowing when to play and not to play. Um, and then the marketing and that whole aspect of the business, like the, the growth of, of timing, timing is everything, knowing when to do things and how to do things. and and uh just basically learning uh, learning a lot from working with pros like Ellison foot and and frankie bello and all these cats that are already been there done that and and still doing it um you know you watch and you learn and anyone who doesn't is a dummy because that's what you should do when you're when you're working with people like that you got to watch and take from what you can and make it your own you know yes. grow Suck up all of that, man. Be a sponge. Take all that in and, and make it your own little thing. Like throw stuff against the wall. If you don't network, your circle just becomes a small circle. Exactly. And you just, all you do is you circle jerk. You, you just go around, around, around. Insanity. Don't get anywhere. You have to expand that circle by networking. And, and, and sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. But if you don't do anything, then you're not doing anything. You got to just kind of go do as much as you can, you know? I love what Esteban said. He said this album was a roller coaster of emotions for him. Is this like the most powerful album that you think that Dead by Wednesday has written so far? I think it's it's up there with some of the most powerful albums, and if not one of, if not the most, it's it's I, I, I it's hard for me because I I'm invested in every single one of them. Sure. If you have to ask a fan, you know, I think I think they could tell you better than I can. I, I'm I'm. I'm sort of biased. It's hard for me to, to separate myself. I like all of them. Uh, I know that some are better than others. I know that some are more re well received than others. I know some sold more than others. So it's, it's hard to like, you know, put on paper. We'll see. I, I think it's up there. I think if, if it's not the most, it's definitely up there with, with them for sure. Opus, what do you hope everyone takes away while listening to Capital Conspiracy or just any of Dead by Wednesday's music in general, man? What do you hope they get from it, if anything? Um, I hope that, you know, it, it's therapeutic for some people and maybe sure. they'll, maybe they'll get some aggression out, maybe, uh, while they're working out, or maybe they'll get enlightened by something. Um, cause you know, I don't really enjoy hearing people talk politics or, or religion or, um, or any of that stuff, um, for the most part. But if you put it in your music, like Metallica used to do, Megadeth sometimes does. Um, a lot of bands actually do. Rage Against Machine. They don't necessarily force feed it down your throat in between the songs or in, in or in interviews or stuff like that. But you read the lyrics and you get and you 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 get something out of it. You under, you're like, oh, okay, or you disagree, or you agree, or you don't know, and you kind of make your own assumption and your own analogy from it, which a lot of people do, and it's missing a lot of times, like in, in nowadays, because it's everything's so literal. And you have everything at the touch of your your finger with the, with technology. 
So uh, the, a lot of mystery is gone. So I think that I think a lot of times you want people just to kind of like indulge themselves into it and, and come up with whatever they think is, is it means to them, you know? I know you had a lot of music growing up and I know you still have a lot of music that you listen to to this day, <laughs> but do you still have the go-to album or maybe just a song that you find yourself going back to and listening to from time to time? You do, you have to have it. You we, cannot. We already, we, already, we already talked about it. <laughs> Metallica. <laughs> You know, when I want to get some aggression out, I'll put it on. I'll put my earphones in and I'll play, man. Playing along to Battery and Damage Incorporated is some of the best shit that I mean. People could hate on Lars all they want. But, you know, maybe now that he's like, what, 60 or something, he, just, he doesn't play as good as he used to. But guess what? He's very innovative and you were, he writes drum parts like a guitar player. Like he writes, he writes drums parts that are memorable. Like you remember his parts, dun 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 dun, dun man, oh, you know, yeah. sure. And like, dun, 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 dun. I mean, something was like, yeah, people might have been doing it, but he brought it to the forefront, and he made it um, known, you know, and he made it popular. And so people can hit on him all as, all he wants, but when I'm playing that stuff, you know, he's got his own feel. He hits the cymbals, you know, not on the one, he hits them on like the three and four and shit. You know what I mean? So it's like. Uh, it's it's definitely uh, um, cool to, to challenge myself to some of the old old school stuff, and also even Megadeth, the old Megadeth. I mean, I have to, I have to learn the old. When I was playing with Ellison, I had to like go, and I was you know back in our day, you had to choose. It was either Metallica or Megadeth. You you didn't <laughs> yeah. you couldn't like both. You had to pick one. So I come from the Metallica background, even playing in the tribute band, and then I get this gig with Ellison. So I have to start learning all the old Megadeth shit, and I'm like, wow, I didn't realize how good and how talented old school Megadeth was. And, and so I have a whole newfound respect for these guys. So I started learning that stuff too. And, and so, um, but as far as the album, a go-to album, I would say definitely master of puppets. I would say, um, uh, it's, it's even tie between blizzard of Oz and, uh, and uh, diary of madman, hmm. but I, I kind of like diary of a madman more. Um, Definitely a uh, vulgar display of power by Pantera. Um, I like uh, the wall by Pink Floyd back in black by ACDC. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Spirits in the machine by the police. Um, Stuart Copeland. So the best, uh, obviously Black Sabbath. I, I played a Black Sabbath tribute band called Earth, Black Sabbath Tribute USA.com. Check it out. Sarah looks like I mean, I, I mean, Ozzy is the godfather. Like he is my that's the one guy I have the utmost respect for in the music business. I wish I could I could have met him. He's the only one I really didn't meet. Um, but I think Black Sabbath, I would have to say, um, Master of Reality or Volume Four, one of those two, or the first album. But Black Sabbath is my favorite band. Like, if you were to ask me what my favorite band is now, I would have to say Black Sabbath. Because without Black Sabbath, there is no Metallica. There is no Exodus. There is no Queensryche. There is no uh, Pantera, Van Halen. You know, there is none of those bands because that, that was the beginning of heavy metal, you know? Motorhead. Um, so. Yeah, you know, and, you know, what's funny is I, people like think I'm like sacrilegious, but I'm not a huge Motorhead fan. And not because... I don't respect Lemmy or respect what they do or who they are. I just, I don't know, man. It's just a little yeah, too sloppy, it. a little too sloppy for me. And live, they were besides Mickey D, who was an amazing drummer, and his whole drum solo was like the whole show. Live, they, maybe because he was older by that time, I started seeing him and stuff. It just wasn't, didn't really. It's like typo negative. They didn't, live, they didn't do it for me. They were good on record. Um, you know, I, I definitely liked it, but it was, it was just, I don't know. Anyway. I'd rather see like the plasmatics, Wendy O. William. That shit was dope. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm more of a, I come from a punk rock background as well. Like old school punk rock. Like my first band was punk rock, a three piece. Um, you know, when I was like 13, I booked my first show and it was a punk rock band. And then I just kind of evolved to metal, you know, metal playing. Those are my favorite albums, I would say. Um, yeah. I, I want to give a shout out right quick to uh, Nick Menza, who was a phenomenal drummer that we lost. Of Oh, so crazy how we lost him but he was a fucking great drummer well you know he I, I heard the story about what happened to him directly from chris poland's mouth who played with him when it happened on stage because he died while playing drums yeah i had a heart he, attack 
Yep. And he like Chris Poland told me, cause I played with Chris a few times and um, he told me, and that's funny because I actually was no better compliment was when both Poland and Ellison um, indirectly um, sort of said that sort of like um, uh, what's the word, I guess that I remind that my, I remind them of him and um, you know, he played a little too fast. <laughs> he, uh, he had a lot of hyper um, but he was a monster player and not saying, you know, I'm not patting myself on the back, but to hear that, um, was, a was, you know, I was like, wow, really? I mean, that, I didn't expect that, you know, and it was awesome. So when I played his stuff, I really tried to give it justice and do as best as I can. Um, because I know that there's a lot of people out there that respect and love that guy. And so did I, and especially after I started play, learning his parts and learning more about him, because I was always like the said, the Metallica guy, I was like, very like, wow, this guy's awesome. And what a nice dude too. And then Chris told me the whole story from his own mouth about how, you know, he was, he was having some heart issues and he shouldn't have played. The doctor said not to do it, but he did it anyway because he couldn't help himself. He wanted to play drums so bad, which I understand that fire inside you. And, and, um, and then that after, you know, he was able to play like soft and stuff for like doing some like jazzy stuff, but the heavy metal stuff he was advised not to do, but he wanted to do it so bad. It's like telling someone to, to like, you could touch it, but you can't, you know, uh, put it in your mouth, but don't swallow, you know, like just, right. you could do it, but not really. So like he, one day he just, you know, I think he just knew he just wanted to go. And he just, he told me that he just went for it. He just went hard and he went, played hard. Like he, like he used to. And then he just stopped playing put the sticks down. He said, he went onto his monitor. He and went like this on his monitor and he just keeled over. It was peaceful. It was during the set and he was gone. And oh, that's wow. here. Poland's mouth was I was like wow man that's that's heavy dude and I'm here I am playing with these guys I'm like wow this is crazy man you know all and, of it all and here he goes so, out the way he wants to you know what I'm saying behind the kit Jeez. yeah man I probably never stop until I can't I literally can't until I physically can't do anymore I bet you I'll, I'll you know I'm starting to feel my elbow here and my lower back and my right side my hip blah, blah, blah. but whatever dude you know just trudge through I do yoga everything I do is to maintain my body, to play, be able to play drums at my age. So I, I do yoga. I do the, go to the chiropractor. I get massages once a month. Uh, you know, I try to, I don't drink anymore. You know, I try to hydrate and, and, you know, I do as everything I can, like cardio, stuff like that. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to do what I do. You know, it's, it's not, it's a young man's game, you know, especially on drums, you know, I got to ask you this because you also have a solo project that's out right now. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. You just re-released your acoustic, uh, EP called Best Creation. Is that correct or no? Actually, Best Creation is uh, talks about Orion. That's what it, that's what my Best Creation is. It's Orion, my son. Oh, um, the whole song is actually if you listen to it, it's called Orion Song, and um, it's called Best Creation Orion Song, and it's pretty cool. Um, it's kind of Alice in Chainsy, but what I wanted to do was simple. Um, I always try to stray away from whatever I'm doing. So if I'm playing in a in a, in a Sabbath tribute band. I'm not going to go play in an Ozzy tribute band or if I'm playing a dead by Wednesday, unless it's something like really big, like, you know, an offer from to play with, you know, uh, overkill or flotsam or saliva or any of those bands, then, then maybe, but otherwise I'll, I do dead by Wednesday and I won't play in a band that's similar to dead by Wednesday. So what I decided to do, because again, we talk about how the industry, the music, music industry is a hustle as I started, I could play guitar. I write, a lot for the band too. I wrote like a songs like you and die and manimal for the last album. I wrote a lot of the guitar riffs or I'll bring in a riff. I'll give it to Sh Dave Sharp and he'll make it better or he'll enhance it or he'll expand on it. So I write too. And I've been playing guitar for a long time. So I was like, you know what? I want to do a project where I could just play by myself, you know, play with myself for lack of better words. <laughs> and so I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start playing acoustic guitar. And I started playing acoustic guitar and doing like the singer songwriter thing and learning a bunch of covers and kind of doing it my own way. And, you know, then I started messing with a loop pedal so I could play solos over it and then a harmony pedal from vocals. So I sound like two people when I'm singing and start doing shows. And I ended up opening up some like pretty massive uh, shows acoustically, like um, candle box uh, acoustic shine down uh, acoustic. I ended up doing a bunch of stuff. I went on tour acoustically with uh uh, Sean Danielson from Smile Empty Soul, who ended up doing a guest song with Dead by Wednesday, you know, after that tour, because of that tour, um, which is a great dude. 
And I learned how to be a front man and sing and play guitar. And it still scares the shit out of me. I love the drums. Drums are my first instrument. That's my love. That's what I always want to do. Um, I definitely look at the other thing as a secondary gig. Um, but I was doing it for a while and, and kind of like doing the singer songwriter thing and going playing, you know, in between touring, I would go play a bar, play it for, you know, a couple hours, make some money, bring it home to the family. And it was an extra income. And I started um, doing that and I, I really started to enjoy it and writing songs and stuff like that until it became where it wasn't showcasing my talent anymore. It was more like you're just background music. You're like a, um, you're a bar, uh, you're, you're a jukebox and, and people don't respect it and they talk over you and they're, and they and you started playing. And then when it started getting like that and I started doing places like that, like breweries, stuff like that, I'm like, you know what? This is, this isn't me. I, when I want, when I show up and I play, I want it to be a spectacle. So that's why when I play drums somewhere, you know, I'm playing, you know what I mean? Opus, my friend, how can folks stay in touch with Dead by Wednesday? Pick up this new album, Capital Conspiracy, everything that's out there right now for you guys. And plus your, your acoustic stuff, man. How can folks stay in touch with everything you and Dead by Wednesday? Okay, well, um, for Dead by Wednesday, it's pretty simple. I mean, if you just Google Dead by Wednesday, a buttload of stuff's going to come up. But you can go to our YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash dbw tv so dbw short for dead by wednesday dbw tv for our youtube page obviously we have dead by wednesday.com the mothership um but we have a facebook under dead by wednesday a twitter a tiktok a snapchat uh a reverb nation a band camp we have a uh twitter uh in instagram facebook all that stuff under Dead by Wednesday. You just got to spell Wednesday right because a lot of people don't realize that the D becomes before, before the N. Wednesday, yeah, right? Exactly. Um, and um, as far as the solo stuff, there's, a, there's an opus of Dead by Wednesday acoustic page on Facebook. Um, and all my music acoustically and Dead by Wednesday is available everywhere. Music is streamable and downloadable via my label, Mind Snap Music, and also Salt of the Earth Records, Scott Harrington in Connecticut. Um, we're, it's, it's a joint effort. and um, But you can go to like, you know, Deezer, iTunes, Spotify, um, you name it. I mean, all the places are Tower Records, FYE. Um, we have a, you can buy hard copy CDs, vinyl, um, soon cassettes, um, but yeah, digitally anywhere, really just, 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 uh, Apple music, iTunes, obviously. So yeah, that's where you can go. And then with earth, my Sabbath tribute, um, we're doing, uh, the Foxwoods casino on July 11th at the hard rock cafe. Um, and then we're doing, um, the, the, uh, the East coast, um, I mean, East coast, the, the European, the third European Lords of the earth tour, uh, with Lord Bishop rocks the band out there. Um, we're also doing um, July 25th, Dead by Wednesday's playing with Hailstorm and Pretty Reckless in Guilford, New Hampshire. We got that dead, uh, the Gen Generation Dead tour with Generation Kill uh, in, all, in, in late July, August. Um, and then we got a bunch of stuff coming up. Um, after that, too, we're doing uh, Earth is Awesome. My Sabbath tribute is also playing in Rhode Island. Um, July 20th. Oh, no, was, I forgot what date it is. I believe it's. I have it. I don't know. Anyway, just go to the, go to the website, earth, Sabbath tribute, USA.com dead by Wednesday.com. Um, and just, I'm um, under for myself, my personal stuff, everything is on all social media. Everything is under opus, the dopest. That's my old singer, Chris keys from G soul used to call me. I was in a band called gargantua soul in the nineties. that did really well. Um, opus O P U S the, dopest d-o-p-e-s-t on all social media you can find me there i also run a um uh i host a a short 15 minute mind snap music segment every sunday night at eight o'clock on uh, east coast time on radio 104 fm here in connecticut as well as online uh, on their on their homebrew show which is like a local sunday night sh uh, radio show on radio 104 you can check me out there as well um, and uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff going on, man. Yeah. I will link everything in this podcast. When I post it, all the links will be there. So you won't have an excuse folks say, well, I didn't know where to go to. It'll be listed right here. So there's no excuse. Awesome, awesome brother. Awesome. Hey man, before I let you go, Opus, would you care to do a promo for my show? 
Sure. Hey, what's up? This is Opus the Dopus from Dead by Wednesday, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Yeah. Everybody stick around. We've got some great, great stuff coming up. And you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour. Get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and YouTube link. Subscribe to that YouTube link and click on that notification bell to get everything uh, as far as uh, Bod's Mayhem Hour stuff. And also, please get out and check out Dead by Wednesday. Pick up Capital Conspiracy. All their yes. stuff that's out right now. Here comes the dead. I mean, just everything under the sun by Dead by Wednesday. Check this out and you won't be disappointed, especially this new album. Check out Opus's other stuff that he's doing. And also, folks, I just want to say this as always. I am affiliated with Metal Incorporated, Forum Obscura, which is a online magazine uh, for Obscura art and metal band reviews. Awesome. And Diary of the Mad Men, the ultimate Ozzy Osbourne podcast with my bros, Dan and Josh. You want to check that out. They know what, everything about Ozzy. Yo, make sure you guys share this video. Yes, please share this video. Everything, Bods Mayhem Hour, Dead by Wednesday. We all need help, not just one. Very much. It was a pleasure. Not a problem whatsoever, man. Thank you so much for doing this. All right, brother. You're listening to Bud's Mayhem Hour. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.